Good morning to a brand new day. Time to learn and games to play. Learning things is so much fun. Learning is good for everyone. Hello, early learners. Welcome back to the art room. It's me, Mrs. Reedright. Yesterday, we met our artist for the week, whose name is Paul Clay. And I told you that he had painted the painting that we're focusing on yesterday and today from a poem. And the poem was called, Once Emerged from the Gray of Night. And emerged means to come out. A flower can emerge from the ground. A bird can emerge from its birdhouse. Emerging means to come out. So once emerged from the gray of night. And he wrote the poem with a letter in each box. And he painted it in with some grays and some kind of fall colors. And that's why I selected this art for us to study. So let's do our song of Hello World, and we'll get started on today's information. And I'm starting on the note C. Hello world, hello world, my old friend, my old friend. It's another day, it's another day. Glad to see you again, glad to see you again. The sun is up, the sun is up. I'm ready to play, I'm ready to play. Hello world, hello world. So what do you say? So what do you say? And what I say is, let's get started. Turn off the electric auto harp and scoot it here next to my chair. And I wanted to tell you three facts today about Paul Clay. Yesterday we learned that he started out playing the violin at seven. His grandma gave him chalk to draw with, and it made him think that art was so interesting. And then he loved both music and art, and he was good at each of them, equally good. He was as good a musician as he was an artist. But when he was a teenager, he made the decision to concentrate on art. He would still play music, but he's put his whole heart and soul into his artwork. And then he began traveling all around the world. And when he traveled, he would meet musicians and make friends with them. And he would meet artists and he would make friends with them. And they would introduce him to other artists and other musicians. And his life became very full and very happy. And we'll find out tomorrow about who did he marry? All right, because it mixes right in with the story. Let's take a look at what we did yesterday. We got a piece of paper and we drew a grid. That grid is like a checkerboard. And I can see, I can probably cut off this row because I didn't use this column. But in order to make it look like his, I could either use my watercolors or I can use my watercolor pencils. And I'm starting out with gray because it emerges from gray. So I'm going to color it in. And it doesn't have to be exact with these watercolor pencils because whenever I touch it with water, it will paint it. Now, if you're using watercolors, use one color and kind of go around to different places on your art and fill it in because it's hard to always wash your brush each time. So you think to yourself, oh, I'll just color in this part. I'll skip to the next row and I won't do gray here because I don't want it all to be in the same area. So I'm going to go around each parts of this O because nothing in the A or the one next to it is gray. So I'm getting in some gray there. Oh, I'll put a little gray down below here. You notice none of my grays are touching each other. I don't think I'll put it on the E because everywhere I'd go, it would be right next door. I will put a little gray down in this part of my J. I think I'll go around the O here and here. You'll notice I skip here because it's gonna be touching this one. And I'll do it down here. I'll do another color in this little spot and maybe this section of the Y. 
I'll go into my B and I think I'll do this bubble gray. You know you don't have to do the same letters I'm doing. This is all about your own ideas and what you would like to do. In my eye, I'm going to do this side of it. Good thing I brought my pencil sharpener because I'm using so much gray, it's starting to get really weak. I'm going to show you something about this. I wanted to point out to you, when you sharpen your pencils, colored pencils do not need to be sharp. You want to do it to where they just have a little bit sharpened because the lead inside or the coloring part is very soft and it will break if you sharpen it too sharp. So I'm gonna put this part of the K. Oh, that made it a lot nicer. And I don't think I'll do anything on this E. All right, I'm gonna put my gray away and I'm going to do a little bit of blue, but then I'm gonna do some water so that you think, oh my gosh, that is so beautiful when you see how I'm painting it in. I think I'll do this other part of the A over here, this part of the R. You notice I'm not putting the colors next to each other. Ooh, the inside of the O would be really pretty blue, blue because it will be like a sky color. It'll be out in the big wide world. Not there, not there. Oh, this part of the E would be nice blue. Let's see what some of the water touching it is gonna make it look like. I'm going to get one of the round brushes because that seems to work so nicely. I'm gonna put a little bit of the water on my apron because I, oh, a little bit there. All right, if it drips, do you remember what I tell you to do? Just catch it. Oh yeah, that looks good. Because not only does the gray in there, I'm leaving a little bit of it dark on the edges. I'm gonna to go to all my gray spots first so I don't have to wash my brush. You notice I'm just getting into the water and just touching it so that I have some water to paint with. I'm not washing my brush. I would have to swish it around a lot more in order for that to work. Need a little more water. I hope that you're noticing I'm being very careful to keep my water in the spots and not let it drip down because it would go into the next color and I don't want that to happen. I might use some of my watercolor because I think a lot of us don't have the watercolor pencils and I want you to see it works just as well if you have the watercolor pans. I just like to do it with the colored pencils because some of the areas stay dark and some of them go light and I really like that. And if you have the watercolor pencils, I think that you will um, enjoy them for a long time. I've had mine for years because I don't over sharpen them. So I hope you would listen to that little instruction about how to keep your pencils nice. It's by not over sharpening them. Do you see any places where I didn't put water on the gray? I didn't either. So let me get in here. I'm gonna go to the blue and I'm mixing the blue and it makes it into a watercolor wash kind of where it's kind of clear and you can see through some of the blue, but then some of the pencil still stays there. Skipping down to this one. It doesn't all have to be blues and grays. You can see on his, he did some greens and yellows and browns. And I really like the browns because they remind me of fall and how nice the fall colors look together. That's how I thought my, um, my beautiful crown of leaves reminds me of fall. I'm gonna move over my watercolors so that I can show you what I just explained. I'm going to use some of my fall colors. I have this golden color I think will be really pretty. And I'm wiping some of the water off because I don't want to make it bleed down there, but oh, this will be good. Oh, that looks really pretty. Notice I'm going around the edge first and then filling in the center. Can put a little more water. I don't want to get too much because I told you what happens then. Oh, this looks so good. These colors look really pretty together, don't you think? This one kind of reminds me of mustard a little bit because it's kind of a cross between yellow and brown. And if you don't have this color in your set, in the lid of your set, you can mix colors and just move the, a little bit of uh, yellow over there and a tiny bit of brown and you can make this mustard color yourself. Because when you two use the colors straight out of the watercolor tin, they all look the same. But if you mix them a little bit and add them to be a mixture, I think it looks more interesting. This looks really good in that part of the J. 
I'll put a little bit down in this Y. You notice again, I'm not putting things that are the same color right next to each other. So you can see the letters still. Still need a little more water. I'm gonna put some golden brown in here, that mustardy color. You know, you could put other words in yours. If you are a person who likes flowers, you just have to make more boxes. But he didn't make his words all on one line. He went down to the next line if it didn't work for him. If it was too small, he went to the next line and just continued the word down there. I wish I knew the, the words in his language so I could tell you everything it was about. But if you're emerging from gray, I think being in a gray place kind of sounds kind of sad. Oh, what about this rusty color? Ooh, that looks pretty good. I wonder if I have too much water on my brush. You know what I noticed today? I started out and we did not sing our Paul Clay song, so we'll just have to sing it twice, I guess, the next day. Or you don't want to sing back-to-back -back songs. I, I don't know why I think that you can't do two things at once. If I knew the song by heart, I could sing it to you while we were painting. You see how much time we have before I have to sing goodbye to you. I think I can stop painting for just a second so we can sing the Paul Clay song because it talks about what project are we doing today. And it went like this. Who's the artist we'll study today? His name's spelled Clee, but we say Clay. Childlike art and colorful too. What is the project we will do? Well, we know what project we'll do because we're doing it right now. What do you think about it, boys and girls? Do you think it's looking pretty good? I do too. I like how it looks. I can't wait to hang this up in my own living room. I'll pretend Paul Clay did it for me. It's not a poem that he knows. All right, I think I will do one more color and then, which one will I do? Well, maybe orange. Do it in this big sunny O. That looks a lot like that brownie mustard. I think I'll put orange next to this one. All right. Just a tiny bit more. I'm going to finish this up and I will show it to you another time. I'll put it back into my portfolio and keep it nice. All right, boys and girls, let me set this down. Oh, that board is so heavy. I think I'm building muscles as I do it. Ready? Oh, it's time to say goodbye to all my friends. Oh, it's time to say goodbye to all my friends. Oh, it's time to say goodbye. Give a smile and wink your eye. Oh, it's time to say goodbye to all my friends. I'll see you tomorrow. I'm going to be using yellow paint and some other paints and black pen we're going to talk about a child's game. So join me tomorrow. Can't wait to see you back here again. Bye, boys and girls. Good morning to a brand new day. Time to learn and games to play. Learning things is so much fun, learning is good for everyone.